What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. After Sound here, bringing you Splinter Lens content every single day. We also stream right here on this channel every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday morning. So come by and say hello. All right, guys. Well, we have two proposals, or I should say pre-proposals, in the mix now, both aimed at combating bot farms and both utilizing, I guess, the same type of tool that was essentially taken out of the game a while ago, which is collection power. Now, there's one here put together by Bronco, so shout out to Bronco from uh, from MavChat, um, who put this together, essentially giving CP requirements in wild mode to try and reduce the amount. Uh, it's not even a ratings inflation because I think the rating will still be fine, but it's the reward calculation so that, I guess, Glint doesn't get out of control and we have all these other you know rewards that essentially uh, are, are available to level one cards, which is what you see in wild right i'm playing against uh or whenever i play in wild sometimes i'm going up against level one cards all the way up in diamond maybe even champion although i don't think i've run into any specific decks or collections at that point and then you also have uh, a second one here that was put together maybe uh, a day or so afterwards now that's coming from claymoin officially but it was at the request of monster bank so shout out to monster bank who did pay the fee we have thank you for your sacrifices that's 200,000 dec down just like that uh and this is this is kind of just a response to uh, Bronco's bot farm uh, or you know minimizing bot farms proposal. Now again, <clears throat> this is taking into account CP requirements and all this. I'm not going to jump into this. If you guys want to get into the weeds of it, you can. I'll be honest, I don't care. Like it's just I, I don't even know if this is the right way for us to go. My my whole point for making the video one is to let you guys know about this, but then two, it it's to talk about collection power because. In, in a way, okay, so let's let's put it this way. The team phased out collection power in favor of the staking requirements for SPS, but they didn't phase it out completely. Like it still exists and it's still a a you know crucial part of each building block for each card, right? So the collection power represents like the burn value that a card could have. And then of course for the upcoming soulbound reward cards, that will be like the unlock cost, right? It'll be the base for whatever multiplier the unlock cost ends up being. In addition to that, they did not phase out collection power from tournaments, which is something that is so frustrating because I have, I have no idea why, I have no idea why they wouldn't have done that. Now, that being said, I, people people are gonna come back and uh, give fair criticism that like if you phase out collection power, then you're gonna get a bunch of people with free entries to tournaments. Tournaments are not gonna be fun anymore because everybody's gonna join since everybody can. And you're just gonna have a lot of uh, a lot of you know skips or you know fleas from battle, which which happens all the time, and uh, that's not wrong. Tournaments are broken as they are. I, I I it's fine. Like again, I've never been a big fan of any time tournaments anyway. I think that there should be more of a focus on the you know live tournaments and making those into events and doing things with them, whether that's the DAO, whether it's the team setting it up, or even uh, you know even um, What's that called? Uh, content creators like myself. Right? I used to do a lot of tournaments here. Haven't done it in a while, but maybe we'll get back to it. The main reason, the main reason, I know, I know I'm all over the place here, but the main reason was because we couldn't tell who was using a battle helper. So the anti-competitive nature of everything, was, so this all goes full circle, right? The anti-competitive nature, especially in competitive environments like brawls, like tournaments, since you couldn't verify it, it's just like, what are we even doing here, <laughs> right? Uh, so, you know, I, I think a lot of folks lost interest, or at least I did, right, in terms of, like, setting things up. Because I couldn't verify if the people that I wanted to give rewards to were actually playing uh, appropriately, right? And so that was that was a tough thing. And I haven't, you know, there's there's some other, you know, content creators that probably run tournaments. But at the end of the day, like, we're not, we're not going to see, I, I don't think we're going to see, um, you know, major money and sponsors coming in for a while until and unless Siler can come in and work some kind of magic transparently, right, to show that they are getting rid of everything. Uh, unfortunately, I think that side of the game is going to be done until uh, until we can get some kind of live events, which, you know, uh, I'll, I'll leave that to you guys to figure out when, when that'll be. Okay, but getting back to collection power, sorry for that, rain of very far aside. Getting back to collection power, it wasn't phased out completely, which kind of irked me. Yet at the same time, it still still does have a little bit of value and, and a little bit of utility, if you think about it, because 
you can use it. I mean, it is a metric in there that all these cards are built with. And granted, I don't know where collection power goes from here forwards, right? Because Chaos and Rebellion have the same collection power built into them. And so I don't know if it's this is just a standard now for collection power or if, you know, they're going to devalue further sets uh, in terms of lowering their collection power. But at the end of the day, like, if it can be used as a way to help prevent poor behavior then I don't think that it should be dismissed, which is why, in a way, I'm in favor of seeing where these proposals go. I'll probably end up voting for them in the pre-proposal phase. And granted, we probably not. Uh, actually, we might get another, um, we'll probably get another town hall before each of these is finalized. So I'd love to get Matt's opinion on them. The thing is, with this, if you think about it from, and if they're only going to implement it in wild, right, because that's where the bots are, if you implement it in wild and you throw that in and it's only impacting the reward shares, right? So uh, people are already going to be, uh, or I shouldn't say people, but accounts are already going to be limited by the amount of SPS they have staked. You're kind of just increasing the cost required per account in terms of making sure that they have the appropriate amount of collection power as well as the appropriate amount of SPS required. Now, people can rent SPS and we see a... I don't know if it's healthy or not, but there's definitely a some activity and volume on the SPS rental market. But what ended up happening when all these bots went down is that we we kind of killed a lot of the rental market because of that. So, in a way, we're kind of going backwards here. We're going back like almost two years to you know May of 2022 when we when we first made, you know, the rank reward changes that killed off maybe half of the bots, uh, dropped over 200,000 of them overnight, I would say. We went from like 500,000 a day, our uh, daily active accounts, to like 250 to 300,000, something like that. So if we can implement that back in, and if the bots are still willing to play ball and willing to jump in, then, then well, then again, there's just more, there's more market activity that's happening. And that ends up benefiting everybody, I think, to a certain extent, right? They're, they're, they're going to go wherever the CP is the cheapest, which would probably be the reward cards. But, you know, that there's an option there. So I don't think that it's necessarily a bad idea. Where I think it gets a little dicey is because everything that we do not only impacts bots, it impacts humans. So, you know, maybe in focusing on the CP requirements and, uh, you know, Bronco put together his own CP requirements per league. There is a, there's kind of a clause here that the team, uh, you know, the team uh, may put their own or may free. Yeah, here you go. Split on the team may freely adjust the CP requirements within a given range at a later time if they deem necessary. Uh, I mean, keep in mind, this is all a suggestion anyway, right? So not, none of this is SPS based. So the team is free to do whatever they want, but if we, if they decide to go forward with this, having it so that, I, and I don't even know what the appropriate collection power would be if you were to have like, you know, a maxed Chaos Legion deck or silver, sorry, not a max, but like a maxed for silver Chaos Legion deck versus a maxed for gold Chaos Legion deck or, you know, whatever the baseline set is. And in this case, I would say, unfortunately, it's obviously not Rebellion. It's it's going to be Chaos Legion since Chaos Legion is much more... Uh, uh, it's it's are less scarce. We'll we'll call it that. So whatever whatever they deem it, it needs to be something that is reasonable for people that are coming in and either renting cards or buying cards, where it's they don't need to buy more than is necessary. Meaning that I think if you if you do it as such, where a max chaos legion for silver, max for silver chaos legion set, right? So whatever the core sets are, figure out what that CP is. And we can maybe make the calculations in a separate video, but I probably won't get around to it. So somebody else can do that. But let's just say, you know, max for silver, that should be the minimum because somebody coming in should be able to, in theory, once the, the new player experience is finished, get a, you know, one click set rental of the entire Chaos Legion core set, for example, right? So you don't have to include rewards because rewards are, you know, all over the place and, and Rebellion doesn't even have rewards right now. And then, of course, like Rift Watchers is going to be almost like an added or extra kind of bonus set if you want. And then promo cards don't don't need to be included. But whatever the baseline is, that should be maybe set as a CP requirement. And that's that's just my suggestion. I haven't run the numbers on this, but I'm just thinking through, you know, if somebody wanted to come in and play, the, it shouldn't be outrageous. Now, it should be something that is definitely not, you know, easily hackable by bots, meaning that like, you know, bots shouldn't be playing in gold and diamond with level one cards all across the board, or they shouldn't be getting, they can still play, but they shouldn't be getting the rewards of that level. Uh, but if a person wants to come in and they want to just kind of 
dabble and you know put the bare minimum and, and again I, I put the bare minimum as something that's just the core set at the max levels maybe not maybe not even the max levels right <laughs> maybe even like th think about like what is the minimum level for silver so for commons it would be level four rather than level five right level five is max uh for for rares would be level three so even just like the minimum cp not even the maximum cp at that point the minimum cp that's where we should be drawing the line so it's just enough to get uh, you know, bots and level one decks completely out of the mix. And, um, you know, what, what this will end up doing in a way is getting those bots to then just rent a bunch of cheap CP. But that gets market activity going, right? And as long as the numbers make sense, the bots keep doing it and other people can do it as well. So I, I'm, I'm in favor of these in theory. I don't know, you know, the numbers, whatever, I think the team will, will uh, have to come come back and and kind of finesse that once they see the data on the back end. But all in all, you know, I, again, I haven't gone through all, all of these in particular, but I, I wouldn't be opposed to having collection power come back into the mix as a way. I know it's going to be used as a gate, but again, we're trying to get rid of exploitative behavior here. And the truth of the matter is, is that, you know, the game just doesn't have enough players. And Matt said this many times, so I'm not, this is not me saying this. this the game just doesn't have enough players. One, <clears throat> to make modern format viable from a match liquidity standpoint and then for a while which is what we're discussing here for there to be an even distribution right uh as matt said modern has too many top level high level players and wild has too many low level players there's no you know uh even distribution throughout either of the either of the leagues which makes both of them kind of not great to play in right i mean if you want to just you know beat down the lower level bots you go over to wild but the rewards aren't as good if you want to compete at the highest levels you go over into modern but you're not going to have a good experience if you don't have you know all of all of the cards essentially so i don't know that's my thought on it i wouldn't be opposed to cp coming back i'm curious to know what you guys think though and if you've uh, gone through each of these proposals and are feeling one way or another uh, one way or another about them let me know your thoughts in the comments below that's all i got for you in this video i'll catch you all in the next one and see you around the game take care